हेलो मन वेल टू पार्ट एट ऑफ लारावल इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन सीरीज ऑफ टू जीरो टू फोर टू फाइव एडिशन एंड सो द चांसेस ऑफ दिस पार्ट इज फोर आउट ऑफ फाइव सो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द जनरल क्वेश्चंस एंड विद प्रैक्टिकल दिस टाइम ओके वी आर गोइंग टू चेक प्रैक्टिकली एवरी क्वेश्चन ओके सो लेट स्टार्ट so the first question is what is the use of dd function in laravel so you may have seen that uh, we use the dd function a lot uh, in almost every series of laravel and uh, let's see that why we use dd function okay so let's see its answer dd function is the helper function which is used to dump a variables array or json contents to the browser and stop the further script, script execution it stands for dump and die so you have seen that we have used dd function a lot and uh, we have used it for debugging the code okay so every time if we stuck somewhere we use the dd function and dd function means dump and die that it is going to dump the code it is going to show the output of the code it is it, it is going to show the response of the code that what actually is coming uh, we can say like uh, if we, we are using uh, some slack query and we are uh, we are going to fetch the results from the database and uh, then uh, may, maybe some error is coming then at that time we are going to use the dd function to check what exactly is coming from the database okay so we are going to dump the code and will uh, will die it means uh, uh, after that the execution of the further code will not work okay so uh, so example suppose we have the array of featured items okay featured items then we can dump it we did a function like below okay so dd so here is the array variable okay in which uh, we have the uh, array of featured items okay so we can print simply print the array of featured items with this dd function okay so if we will add this statement the execution will stop here uh, to show the featured items and uh, further code will not be executed at all so i'm going to show you practically okay we are going to check dd function in laravel website uh in almost every laravel website in the laravel 11 website as well we have used the dd function a lot i'm going to show you that how we can check it with dd function like uh, uh here it's our laravel 11 e-commerce website uh, if you have followed the series you must know that uh, uh, with every almost with every function we are going to check that what output is coming exactly so i'm going to open here like listing page if i'm going to open so these are the products okay so i'm going to open the product controller at the front here and here i'm going to use the uh, dd function here okay so here you can see that we have the queries uh, we have the product queries and the, we have the final query as well and you can see the dd function we have already used the dd function here to uh, to uh, to check the response of the code okay so i will remove this uh, command from here and we'll check what exactly it is coming what exactly is coming and here you can see the syntax is coming it is going to show the syntax okay so what exactly it is coming so here everything is coming and uh, to properly show it we can uh, do one more thing here uh, to have more clarity json decode json encode that that will help us to show uh, the better layout of the code we are going to convert it to array by this okay so now we are going to see see here is the response okay so it's all coming here you can see the array of complete data is coming so whatever it is coming it is it is going to show the two products here dark blue uh, with uh, this one uh, product name is blue t-shirt and here it is the red t-shirt so there are two products so we able to debug the code like this and we can able to see the result okay so uh, so like this we can use the dd function okay so i hope that you can follow i i will also share uh, this series with you so that you can see uh, it practically that how we have used the dd function uh, uh, from time to time okay so let's move it and okay so website is working fine so let's uh, see now uh, let's see the another question after this okay What is at the rate of include in Laravel? Okay, so 
uh, you may have used include a lot see without include i don't think that uh, any laravel website is possible because there are many common files uh, we used to include in another file uh, there are many files that we want to include uh, in in another file let's see its uh, answer first of all then i will explain you further include is just like a basic php include function that helps to include one file into another users can also include multiple files into one file like in laravel e-commerce website we have included header and footer into layout file okay so it's very simple that uh, we normally use it in php as well we use uh, that include function and the same uh, the, the purpose is same as well uh, to include one file into another file okay and we have used it as well uh, so many times and use user can able to include multiple files in one file as well and uh, in the e-commerce website as well we have included header and footer in the layout file okay i'm going to show you the layout file here here we have also used it in the same way uh, here you can see that we have included the header as well as the footer okay so here we have the separate header separate footer and uh, we want it in every file so that's why we have included it like this is the uh, header file okay and we have included this file in layout file and here you can see and if in case i'm going to remove it the header then you can see there is no header at all then if you will uh, remove the code and here you can see the header is missing okay where is the side logo there is no logo no menu okay so so the it helps us to uh, add the file uh, like create the separate file and add that file with this include function okay so i hope that it's clear to you let's see the next question so we have practically seen that how to use this include function which file is used to create connection with database in laravel okay so this is very important question and very basic question as well that uh, if you are creating the dynamic website in laravel then uh, if you are having the database uh, then uh, in which file you can make the connection okay so let's see its answer dot env file is used to create connection with the database in laravel okay so we have seen that this dot env file we have used in every laravel website in which we used to create the database connection okay we also call it as the environment file okay uh, so let's see further offline we are just required to define database but online we are required to define host database username and pa password most of the time so here you can see this uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, have the db connection db host db port db database db username and db pa password okay so in mysql if you are using the mysql uh, then we need to write here the mysql but in our case if i am going to open the dot env file here you can see that we are not using the mysql we are in fact using the mongodb then the connection will come as the mongodb okay so if you are using some other like if you are using the sql then here the connection will come as the sql okay so host will remain the same uh, as we are using the offline okay uh, if you are using the online then the host is given by the server so port also uh, will remain the same in case of mysql the port uh, is 3306 and in case of uh, uh, mongodb the port is 27017 okay so in mongodb we will just require the database name to be given here and along with that we also require the db uri okay that is fixed uh, that we need to define it here as well okay and but in here we just require to give the database and username as well uh, with the root okay and that's set that will set us uh, our uh, our database connection uh, with the laravel okay uh, and environment file can also be used to create the environmental variables we used to like uh, global variables we can say the global variables that we can uh, we can uh, we can use anywhere in the website okay those global vari variables we can able to use anywhere in the website so see from time to time we used to uh, use these global variables like this one paypal client id okay it's the global variable and we are using this variable in the paypal.php uh, in in some other file if you are going to search uh, this one then we are using this one in another file here you can see the we are using it in paypal controller okay like this so uh, it is help us to declare the global variables as well okay so uh, these are the benefits of the dot env file i hope it's clear to you let's see the next question 
what is auth in laravel okay so very important question and very basic question as well uh, the interviewer can ask you that what is auth in laravel see laravel website uh, does not exist without auth and auth is basically the authentication okay authentication of the user uh, so let's see its uh, answer first of all auth or authentication is the process of identifying the user credentials in laravel it can be managed with a session which takes two parameters username or email and password okay so see authentication it's the process of identifying the user credential see uh, every user uh, will have its own own credentials and uh, if the user is logging into his account no other user can able to assess his account uh, without the credentials okay so uh, it it prevents uh, uh, it it, it prevents prevents the unauthorized access of any of the user so it's really important and in laravel uh, we use this auth uh, uh, for the login purpose and uh, and it's like a session like we used to uh, we use session earlier with php a uh, long time back we used session earlier with php and with session uh, we used to check that whether the username or password is correct we are going to check that with the database and then we'll start uh, one session like the admin session we are used to create uh, like with every account page with every uh, admin page we are going to check that its session uh, is there or not okay but here in laravel we use auth and laravel provide the default or default web auth uh, for the users table for the users table it provide us and uh, we use the uh, email and password for the authentication most of the time I'm going to show you that how we are using how we are uh, we are using the user controller and here you can see uh, we are going to open the user controller at the uh, front okay user controller at the front and here you can see login user function uh, okay so here see here the, we have used here the auth attempt see auth attempt helps us to verify that the whether the user uh, uh is uh, whether the user is real or not whether uh, to authenticate the user to verify the user credentials okay so here we take the uh, input from the user as email and as well as the password we're going to take from the user and we'll check in the database and auth attempt will help us to check the user credentials that if it match uh, it with the database then we will accept it and will uh, will uh, then the user able to log into our website okay so auth attempt here helps to verify the user identity okay so this authentication helps us to identify the user credential okay so this is the example uh, by which we are uh, we are using it okay so i hope that it's clear to you uh, so let's see the next question what is guard in laravel so guard is really important in laravel let's see its answer guard helps to serve the purpose of multiple authentication in laravel so guard is the alternative process of identifying the user credential like auth we also call it as auth guard okay so see here we have used the default web auth so it provides with every laravel uh, they provide us the auth okay and auth is for the user stable and suppose if you want to have some other user in the website some other role uh, in the website like admins if you are having the admins or sub admins or if you are having some other persons like dealers or some other person like retailers okay so for that case means you have the separate tables like you have the users table you have the admins table you have the dealers table and we want the authentication for every table so it is not possible with the auth alone at that time we require the auth guard so guard helps us to create the multiple authentication in laravel see here you can see there is just one authentication in laravel single authentication and that is for the user that is meant for the users okay but the guard helps us to create the multiple authentication in laravel not only one it helps us to create the multiple authentication one two three four whatever okay so uh, uh like in uh for the admin as well we have used the auth guard admin i'm going to show you here if you are try to log into the admin here you can see the auth guard admin okay you can see it auth guard admin 
see for user we have used that default or that is just the auth auth check we have used okay or uh, auth attempt we have used and here we have used here the auth guard admin and this is admin is the guard okay one guard like if i have created the dealer guard dealer middleware as well then here it will become as dealer okay then there is a separate guard for the dealer okay so we can create the multiple guards in laravel for the multiple authentication so like this uh, we can use this guard for the multiple authentication in laravel okay so i hope that it's clear to you let's see the next question what is the use of the db packet so many a times we have used this db packet for the alternate solution of uh, of of the crud functionality like we use the crud functionality a lot okay and db packet is the alternate process let's see its answer db packet is used to run sql queries like create select update insert and delete so we are going to see it practically okay so uh, like uh, uh, like if i want to fetch it uh, any of the products here uh, or uh, or i'm going to check in index controller uh, there are you, we are going to see it's the featured product okay here you can see the featured products are coming here okay i'm going to check first of all uh, with this one uh, here we have not used the db packet so far but uh, here i'm going to echo this one feature products okay so i'm going to check here the output uh, of the home page i'm going to go to the home page here uh, okay let's see so here you can see the uh, one product is coming okay so here uh, we uh, have just uh, uh, dump and dive we have used like i have explained earlier so now i am going to convert it to the db packet okay alternate solution here we are going to add we are going to add its class use use db and here we are going to update uh, this one as well db table uh, products okay our table name is products we are going to use here the products okay and here we are going to use this one instead of this okay so now i'm going to check uh, i'm going to refresh here and uh here call to undefined method builder with okay so there is some issue uh db table products uh, with brand okay so see we have used this one so that's why it is not working uh with uh, with other relation it is not working but now it will work fine i think yes now it is working fine okay so it is the alternate solution see we have used the db facade now to get the results from the database okay but still the preferred choice is that one okay, that the earlier one that we are using the model here uh, to get the results and we are using the relation as well okay so it is just the separate alternate solution uh, where uh, like you have one table that is not associated with any other table and you just want the entries of those tables few entries from that uh, table okay then you can use the db packet okay so i hope it's clear to you so let's see the next question what is the difference between authentication and authorization okay so authentication we already know now that it is used to uh, to validate the user credentials to to verify the users uh, users credentials like email and password uh, so that the user able to log in and no one else can able to see the user account but in case of authorization what is authorization okay so let's see its answer first of all authentication means confirming user identities uh, through credentials while authorization refers to gathering access to the application by generating a token so if you have seen the laravel api series then i don't think that i need to explain you if you have seen my laravel api series that we have created uh, a few years back uh, okay so see the authorization is basically uh, used to generate the token uh, for the apis that will prevent the apis from unauthorized access okay so th this is the basic purpose of the uh, authorization okay so like uh, we use the uh, passport package in laravel uh, to generate the token okay uh, and uh, that uh, that token we use to save uh, like a auth like we used to call it like uh, authorization token okay and we are going to use that token for the other apis as well so the authorization basically means to generate the token okay for the uh, for the apis okay so that we can make the api secure 
uh, so this is the answer of this question i hope it's clear to you and uh, i'm going to uh, give you the links of laravel e-commerce as well as the laravel api series so please follow this series so that you will see it in detail you will get its solution in detail okay so that you can explain it practically as well to the interviewer so let's see the next question what is the default laravel session time or duration i hope that every laravel developer must know its answer let's see its answer the default laravel session time or duration is two hours okay so the default session timeout is two hours like we are going to log in uh, to the website uh, then after two hours it's automatically gets signed out okay uh, so i'm going to search in google so, so see the series complete but i'm going to uh, search in google default timeout session in uh, laravel because i want to see that it remains the same or Yes, it is two hours. You can see it is two hours. Okay, so it's fine. So that's all for now. And I hope uh, that uh, this uh, part will also help you to crack the Laravel interview. And there are many more parts will come and more specific Laravel 11 uh, and Laravel 12 uh, interview questions will also come soon. So uh, please stay tuned for that. That's all for now. Have a nice time. Goodbye.